Well, there's a new Ottawa police chief, and he took questions Saturday amid a violent crackdown on the Freedom Truckers convoy. One reporter expressed concerns over the use of cameras, reportedly used to gather intelligence on the protesters. She then asked whether police would be actively pursuing people involved in the protest. Let's take a listen to his response. There's some video cameras that the police are using and uh, some news outlets are reporting that you're gathering intelligence with those cameras. Can you elaborate, like, if the protesters at this point, uh, you know, uh, retreat and go home, uh, are they going to be getting sort of repercussions down the road? Or are you going to be sort of actively pursuing the people that you've been sort of documenting and filming who are still out there protesting? What are your plans after this, uh, after the protest is over? Thank you. It's a great question. And the simple answer is yes. If you are involved in this protest, we will actively look to identify you and follow up with financial sanctions and criminal charges. Absolutely. We, we, this investigation will go on for months to come. The crackdown comes after Prime Minister Justin Trudeau activated emergency powers in an effort to end the protests last week. Canada's parliament was supposed to debate the powers Friday, but due to police closing in on the protesters, MPs were told the debate would be put on hold to avoid the area. The vote is expected to take place today. Abby Deshman, director of the Criminal Justice Program at the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Abby. Thank you. And so, Abby, you've argued that, in fact, set aside everything you want to say about these emergency powers, Trudeau has not actually met the burden of proof to enact them. Can you t talk a little bit about what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the government has used the Emergencies Act, which is federal legislation in Canada that gives them enormous amount of power to the executive branch. So that's our prime minister and our cabinet ministers to pass orders without them first going to parliament. Uh, and it's legislation that is reserved for very serious national emergencies, war, uh, really um, very concerted domestic threats to the stability of the government, uh, sovereignty, territorial integrity, that kind of thing. And there, there are parts of the act that talk about public order, but you know they really refer to um, very serious, uh, violent threats to take over the government. You know, that is not what we're seeing. There certainly are elements that are violent, just like there are elements in law Lots of protests that are violent. You know, people do commit crimes in the context of protests. And there are certainly people who are extremely angry at the government, including some people who are saying this government needs to go, we need to overthrow them. But we're really concerned about the use of this type of national security legislation on what we essentially see as a domestic, very, very difficult protest situation. Yeah, absolutely. We'll I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And we just heard from that, you know, police chief describing that they would continue to track people down. It, financial sanctions, um, th th you know, there's a this is some pretty aggressive uh, kind of action. It's something that I, I think should really incense civil libertarians, r regardless of, of how you feel about the broader, you know, questions about vaccine mandates, other things, although those aren't totally unrelated questions. I think those actually also have civil liberties implications, um, you know, but the idea that the, the government would seize this moment to just grant itself dictatorial powers uh, is, is really appalling. And, you know, more, I think more people, even people who maybe, maybe don't agree with the truckers on the vaccine mandates, should be really skeptical about about how this is being used to further a an authoritarian kind of government agenda. Yeah, well, we're certainly involved because of the freedom of peaceful assembly and freedom of expression implications. It, it really isn't about the content of the protest uh, to us, although certainly we've spoken out lots of times um, over the past few years about public health measures. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think it's dictatorial. I do think that's a little bit too far. This is legislation that was passed by our parliament. Uh, the you know, legislature does have a say to ratify, you know, what the government has done afterwards, but they are very serious emergency powers. Um, and, you know, this is why, you know, we've filed uh, a court case because we don't think that the legislative threshold has been met. Um, but I do think it's a bit of a stretch to say that, uh, you know, it's dictatorial. But you could say certainly that it's authoritative. I mean, this is way too far. And I don't know, were the emergency, act, was this act meant to go after protesters? 
And another another question, what kind of protests were they expecting? I mean, if you can't, uh, this is the thing that always gets me when people say, well, you know, you just can't be disruptive when you're protesting. So you can protest so as long as you can be made invisible. So as long as everybody can ignore you and they don't have to actually listen to your demands and nothing actually gets done, right? I mean, is that is that the way that you have to protest your government now? That as long as your government can still continue to do whatever it wants to do and ignore you, then it's fine? I mean, what were these emergency, were they, to go after protesters, I mean, that this is, this is supposed to be a Western democracy. Yeah, no, and it's very clear in the legislation, they're not meant for lawful protest, uh, you know, but as always, whenever there's legal language, there's 17 million interpretations of it. You know, I think it's very clear that, you know, a public order emergency in the legislation is an emergency that arises from threats to the security of Canada that is so serious as to be a national emergency. It's a really high threshold. And exactly what you're talking about is our, our central concern, you know, protests are often disruptive. That doesn't mean they're violent, um, but they are often disruptive. They, we've had protests that have blockaded railways. We've had protests that have taken over the streets of downtown cities for months at a time. We've had people occupying public space for months. And all of those things have happened and been dealt with under normal policing powers, normal laws without the resort to emergencies acts or you know any claims to national security problems. So that's the type of response we would expect. It's not to say, you know, the Ottawa protests were overly disruptive. And I don't say that lightly. I'm a civil libertarian and I have come to defend disruptive protests many, many, many times in the past. Um, but there were a lot of activities there that were deeply, deeply impacting the surrounding neighborhoods that needed to be addressed. But we do need to maintain some space, a healthy space, a robust space for the types of disruptions that we would expect in a democracy that welcomes protest and dissent. For, for people who kind of agree with that general point, that the Canadians who say that uh, they sympathize with the right to protest. The protests went a little bit too far. How are those types of people responding to the latest kind of government crackdown, the attempts to sanction people financially, that they're going to track them for months, they're going to, uh, you know, this, this rather draconian response. Is that bringing any sympathy back to the protests or were people so frustrated that they're like, you know what, bring the hammer down? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's very hard. I think there's a lot of division in Canada, as there is in many countries across uh, the world. There is a real schism between um, people who are supporting the protest and believe very, very strongly that those individuals um, not only have the right to be there, have a duty to be there, and then people who are extremely frustrated by the entire debate over public health measures. That's that's informing it. I think people generally uh, did think it was time for the Ottawa protest to be wrapped up in one way or another. What is really concerning to me, though, is, you know, these powers don't are not limited to Ottawa. These are national powers that, as you say, are very, very um, sweeping, right? They do give uh, police the authority to stop peaceful protests across the country. They do give the police the authority to send information to banks to have all kinds of bank accounts frozen, whether or not those individuals were at those protests. They are very, very, very broad powers that are not limited to the sites of protest that people are most focused on, uh, you know, in the past week, past three weeks. And I think today is actually going to be a really key day. Today, uh, our government is going to, our legislature is going to vote on the proclamation of an emergency. And, uh, you know, we have called on them to think about whether those emergency powers are justified today, because today the blockade in Ottawa is down. Today, we do not have longstanding blockades at our borders anymore. Today is a vastly different situation in terms of what the government was focusing on, you know, just a week ago. And even if they think those powers were justified last Monday, I, I, I would certainly hope that our legislature um, does not continue to extend those powers um, now that those blockades have come down. And, and Abby, while, while we've got a Canadian on the line here, I want to ask a question that I can't figure the answer out to. Why don't they just meet these protesters' demands? Like, cases are plummeting. <laughs> why, like, what, what, what are they, why are they clinging to these, these mandates? It, it seems like even if you don't think the protests themselves are reasonable, the demands at this point in the pandemic do seem reasonable. Well, so, I mean, we have a lot of, well, we have a lot of 
um, provinces and public health experts that say there are, you know, there is a need for some continued public health measures. The protests demands were quite, quite, quite varied, right? So they started out focused on uh, mandates for truckers and then very quickly expanded to encompass a whole wide range of public health measures, including vaccinations, testing, uh, limits on capacity. So, you know, I don't think that, you know, all of the public health experts that are advising our governments um, would support that. And and actually, the, you know, the, the protesters are focused on the federal government, but uh, it's actually the provincial governments that are controlling the um, vast majority of the public health measures. So even if the federal government did want to move on some of the public health measures that they control, uh, they certainly wouldn't be able to do anything about a lot of the provincial measures, which are impacting people's daily lives more. But the, the cross-border mandate, uh, you know, and I know the United States has one as well, so you know, they has to be dropped on both sides. But that one, as well as the domestic flights, is not being able to use any sort of train or even trains. I believe. Is it all is it all domestic um, travel, trains, planes? You can't get on without a vaccine passport. That is controlled by Trudeau, isn't it? Yeah, I'd have to check on the trains. Um, certainly flights and the cross-border uh, trucker requirements, they are controlled by the federal government. And you're right, you know, I think people were right to question whether those make sense. You know, people who are driving trucks are not in contact um, with large numbers of people. Sometimes they're not in contact with anybody. So, you know, those are the kinds of public health mandates that we've been questioning throughout the pandemic that we think are, you know, right to question. I do want wonder um, if this protest hadn't devolved and evolved so rapidly, there might have been more of a chance for discussion and dialogue, but it quickly took on a much broader cast. It quickly took on a very political cast. And I think that really got in the way of some reasonable, actually evidence-based discussion about what public health measures make sense. So now the government's just trying to always... own... Every, everything truckers. becomes yeah. about uh, everything <laughs> yeah. uh, is an issue at protests. Yeah. Uh, Abby, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Well, tomorrow on Rising, writing fellow at the American Prospect, Lee Harris, will join us to discuss her reporting on the new head of the Development Finance Corporation's hedge fund history. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. See you then. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>